All right, if it slithers or crawls or hisses, chances are you'll find it at a unique educational zoo in Maplewood. Now you can get up close and personal with more than 75 exhibits of reptiles, amphibians, and invertebrates at a place called Snake Discovery. Reporter Kristen Hobrick takes you inside. So Emily, you're an exotic animal expert, and we've got some reptiles with us. Ginger, I'm holding her. What kind of uh, lizard is she? Yeah, Ginger is a bearded dragon, and they are debatably the most popular pet lizard in captivity right now. They're awesome little li lizards. I love the spikes and the orange color, too. Yeah, yeah, in the wild, their beard, so to speak, turns black when they feel threatened, and they can kind of puff it up a little bit, so. Oh, she's very, very intimidating. She's soft, yeah, but they, yeah. Can, they can harden the spikes a little bit if needed. Okay, <laughs> and your girl has a blue tongue? Yes. And that is part of her name. This is the blue tongue skink. So while her name is Oprah Skink Free, uh, we but, love your puns. <laughs> we love our puns here for sure. <laughs> um, but yeah, they have a nice blue tongue, which helps deter predators when they feel threatened. Okay. So what they do in the wild in Australia, both of these are Australian species. The blue tongue skink, though, will open its mouth and stick out its tongue because bright colors in nature usually means watch out, I'm dangerous in some form or another. Okay, and then yeah. they'll move on. Yep, exactly. It uh, hopefully threatens back the, the predator and they just leave them alone. Okay, so how did you get into the world of reptiles? You know, we have always been exotic animal lovers. I was working at a pet store and that's what introduced me to the world of reptiles, learning how to take care of them to help customers. And that's when I realized these are really incredible animals. Mm -hmm. So my husband Ed and I got into reptiles together and you know, one thing led to another and we have an educational reptile zoo. <laughs> and you have this huge following on social media, your YouTube channel, great content, three million plus viewers. <laughs> What types of videos seem to get the most traction? Ooh, that's a great question. Our most popular videos are definitely our egg hatching videos. Oh, do you have an attitude already? Do you have an attitude? You do! You haven't even come out of your egg, and you're already hissing and striking. Is that a tortoise? That That's Rafiki, yes. Crawling behind us? Uh, that's our leopard tortoise. He seems to find wherever there's commotion and something wow. important going on Look in the zoo. Look at that shell. And without fail, he walks straight through the middle of it. So. And he's just free roaming. Yeah, yeah, he just kind of does his own thing. I love this place. <laughs> this is amazing. What's up, buddy? Okay, so now we are meeting Rex, your American alligator, and she's pretty. I love her eyes, but she has a heartbreaking backstory. What happened? Yeah, so Rex is a big diva here. We love her. She's probably the most popular animal in our zoo, uh, but she does have a sad backstory. She was brought up from the Everglades as a hatchling back in the 80s, and she was kept in a four-foot wooden box for the first 27 years of her life. Uh, Constantly. Yep, yeah, that's what she lived in, and her previous owner loved her, but just didn't quite know how to properly take care of an alligator. Even her snout is curved because of the confinement. Yeah, as she was growing, she had a, a lack of calcium in her diet to do just pro improper foods, so she had weak bones growing, and as her snout would hit the sides of that small box, it started curving upwards, and she developed a condition called rubber jaw, where her snout was rubbery, oh. and she still kind of shows it today, even though it's straightened out considerably since we sure. adopted her. And it's almost lunchtime. It is. Yeah, today Rex is going to enjoy a shrimp treat. Oh, and, lucky uh, girl. <laughs> the only problem is she's learned to beg for food in front of her door. So we are going <laughs> to call her. She knows. Oh, look at that. She's looking at the door already. <laughs> we're going to call her into the water because okay. we're trying to teach her to wait patiently in her pool to get her food. Should I go in that little tunnel? I think you should. Yes. yes. She's going to get a couple more shrimp. Yep, we have a tunnel that goes through her habitat so that you can be in there with her. Ah! <laughs> Hello, Rex! <laughs> Come here! Oh my Come on here! <laughs> Come on! Come on! Good girl! Come here! A little further! And one more cool. step, you can do it! Good girl! <laughs> Alright, good job! Now you get your fish, you hear your, oh. you your shrimp reward. <gasps> Whoa, girl! <laughs> this is like some National Geographic stuff. You're in there with her. This is so crazy. Ready for our yep. last snake? All right, here we go. <laughs> oh my gosh. So this is Carl. He is a boa constrictor. He's a very friendly I dude. feel full on Britney Spears vibes. You're, you're doing Like I'm at the MTV Music Video Awards. <laughs> I don't know how she was singing and dancing with one of these on her. And I heard she didn't practice. That was the first time she held that snake was on the stage performance. So. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah. Now with boas, they're very powerful. They right? are, yes. How do they like, do, do they 
Pringle as I'm asking this? It's around my neck. <laughs> I mean, like, Pringle, they're prey. Technically, yes. So they are called the boa constrictor because they I technically constrict to their prey until it's no longer living and then they swallow it whole. Okay. So snakes are either constrictors or venomous. So really, a lot of snakes out there are actually constrictors too. Okay, and who are you holding? This is Diamond. She is a super dwarf reticulated python. She is gorgeous too. She's oh my gosh, bright. her yellow color? Yes, yes. So this is the species that is actually the longest species in the entire world. <laughs> These guys don't get terribly big. He's only about, what would you say, six-ish feet? Something like that. Uh, only, so, yeah. yeah. Not too bad. <laughs> crazy. Basically snakes, they, they realize that people aren't going to hurt them, people aren't uh, predators or prey, and once they realize that, they're not afraid of people. You can hold them, they're great animals. Kristen and Carl, they look very happy together. That Carl's a nice fella. Thank you, Kristen. I assume it's a fella. I, I guess I so shouldn't, too. I didn't. Diamond was didn't the other ask. one. Yeah, I would yeah, ask Carl. I didn't ask. For more information on snake discovery, just head to minnesotalive.com.